Welcome to our worship on this Sunday at 9. It is our special service this week as we uh, celebrate Ascension Day, which of course is on Thursday. Um, and uh, so the liturgy is slightly different. You will find it uh, under uh, Liturgy for us Sunday at 9, Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, on our St. Giles Church website. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of, the, of sin and death, he appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers. Trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, let us hear the story of his party. Acts chapter 1 verses 6 to 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the dates or times the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking to the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, the Mary, mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him the praise worthy of his name.
Let us pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend, and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We sing... Lord of all hopefulness. John chapter 17 verses 1 to 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are all yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, 
as we are one. And so we come to the sermon. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, many of us are confused at this time. And when we think about it, so were the followers of Jesus when they witnessed him ascend into heaven. But you brought peace. You brought direction. You brought purpose and mission. Father, give us these things that we may live life to the full in service of you. Amen. And that's right. The disciples were confused. And they were hiding somewhere together in a room in Jerusalem. Think about it. They'd seen Jesus welcomed into the city. He received a royal welcome. That was on Palm Sunday. Then they enjoyed their last supper together. And But there were some strange events. Judas betrayed Jesus. The disciples didn't understand why that happened. The remaining disciples. Then Jesus was arrested. They only narrowly escaped themselves from the soldiers. And then, of course, Good Friday and the crucifixion. They'd just about given up all hope when the risen Lord Jesus appeared before them, ate with them, and then for six more weeks instructed them about the kingdom of God. Just when it all started to make sense, just when Jesus had given them a promise and a purpose, he left them again. This time they saw it from themselves. Immediately after Jesus promised them that the Holy Spirit would give them power to be witnesses throughout the world, it's recorded in verse 8 of chapter 1 of the Acts of the Apostles. He was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Now what were they to think? When were they going to get this power that he promised? What were they supposed to do until then? And when the Holy Spirit did give them power, of course Jesus didn't tell them when that might be, let alone when God would bring in the new kingdom, how is that going to help them witness to the very ends of the earth? Those earliest Christians must have been overwhelmed and confused trying to adjust to to one life-changing experience after another. But we've just been doing something similar. We've been adjusting to the changes forced upon us by COVID-19. We are perhaps used to rapid changes in today's society, and we've certainly experienced them in the last few weeks. But we're not very good at changing church, are we? But what about changes inside ourselves? How do we respond when we're overwhelmed and confused by everything that's happening around us? What can you count on when everything seems to be out of control? Who can you truly depend on? Well, the risen Lord Jesus gives the overwhelming, overwhelmed apostles a promise and a purpose, a gift and a mission. Here in his parting words, Jesus promises them, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He basically says, you are going to do what I've been doing. Now, that's an incredible challenge, incredible purpose, but it came with an amazing promise. Just how were they going to accomplish all this, sir? Since coronavirus, many people have wanted answers from me, often answers to questions that I simply, simply do not know the answers to. When can I have my wedding? Will we be able to have a wedding? What about my funeral? All questions that are valid, but questions which really I do not have the answers to. We're living in such strange times, and none of us know for certain how things will play out. Some of us even want to know when we can go back to church. And that in itself is a strange question, because we are the church. It's not the building, but you've heard me say that many times. 
and so we can't go back to ourselves. But maybe we'll be out of our buildings for a long time. Maybe we need to be more church and less attached to our church buildings. Before the disciples could ask these questions or even think of more, Jesus ascended into heaven. So now what? He's gone. They just stood there looking at the sky while they were waiting for the power that Jesus promised. And whilst they were doing that, suddenly two angels, two men they did not recognise, appeared and interrupted them, saying, in verse 11, Men of Galilee, then, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken away from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, get busy. Jesus has given you a mission to be his witnesses. So just get on with it. The disciples had already seen a couple of angels standing by the tomb after Jesus had risen. And they struggled to understand what they should do this time. They'd heard the promise of Jesus, which gave them a purpose to fulfil for Jesus. Now what they needed was to wait for the gift of power that would proceed from the ascended Jesus. How did the apostles cope with uncertainty and confusion as they waited for the promised gift? How did they begin to develop specific methods to address the overall purpose of their witness mission? Well, I find that the Acts of the Apostles reading that we had describes the Apostles' response as well as some possibilities for ourselves. After all, the Lord has given us the same promise and purpose, the same gift and same mission. And it's likely that we, like the Apostles, find ourselves waiting for more specific direction. So where did they go? What did they do? They went where Jesus told them to go, to Jerusalem. That was where the church began and Christianity spread out from. So the apostles wandered back down the road to Jerusalem because it is only about half a mile. So where do you go when you're anxious and confused by life and by the challenges that you might face? The risen Jesus told the disciples to stay in Jerusalem. The ascended Jesus is inviting us to the centre of God's loving actions for us and the world. For us, that's the body of Christ, the people of God, the church. Here is where we know the promise and gift of power. Here is where our mission is articulated and purpose in life is clarified. And we don't need a building for that. Back in the city, the apostles remained close to where they knew God's love and encouragement were located. Amongst God's faithful people. And there's nothing better if you want encouragement and you want hope and you want joy and you want community. The people of God, the church, the body of Christ. And this body that, they went, that the apostles went back to included several women in addition to Jesus' own mother and brothers. And while they waited, these early followers of Jesus all joined together constantly in prayer. And they didn't have to wait long before they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and their mission began. God has already given us the gift that Jesus promised to the apostles. And when we receive our baptism and receive that prom word of promise the Holy Spirit welcomes us into the body of Christ the fellowship where God's love is actively demonstrated where God's promise of forgiveness is boldly proclaimed and where community is shared constantly living and praying within this community of believers God's people do receive guidance for growth and purpose of living today the Ascended Christ has given you a purpose and a promise. He's given us the promise of love and a gift of his presence. 
So I pray that you would open your hearts to receive it. Because within that gift is a mission and a purpose. Pray with one another for understanding as you begin to unwrap it. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you reveal our mission and purpose through your Son, risen and ascended. We pray, Lord, that you would use this time that we have to ourselves as we spend time in lockdown to reveal to us more and more of the specifics of what you want for us and that you call us to do and to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What we believe, the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the quick and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Thank you, people. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for the Christian Church throughout the world, and especially for this, our diocese, for Sentamu, our Archbishop, and for John, our Bishop. Strengthen all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this, our nation, at the time of the pandemic crisis, we remember especially members of the government as they seek to find a way through the crisis and to end the lockdown. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and fr friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who are sick at this time, those known to us and those around us. We pray especially for Alison Roberts and Catherine Peters. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died at this time, remembering the many who have died through COVID-19. Remember particularly any of those known to us who have died and pray for their families and friends as they warn. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to the peace. Jesus says, Peace I have with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share the peace with one another. And now we prepare the table. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good. Our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, the King of glory, born of a woman. He came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal. And by his ascension, gave us a sure hope that where he is, we may also be. Therefore, the universe resounds with Easter joy and with choirs of angels we sing forever to your praise, saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, 
we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. A prayer for after communion. Let us pray. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nourished with such spiritual blessing, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we say, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste for the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. And a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. They were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. And so, a responsory. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, Make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. And the blessing. God the Father who has given us his Son, the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. We stand and sing, be still for the presence of the Lord.
the dismissal blood. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.